Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rodian and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a garden wall from start to finish. You need to build garden walls up each side of the property. So we're gonna take this design and put it on either side. So I'm gonna show you the whole process, how to set it out, how to build it from start to finish. So as you can see, the footings have already been done for me. I'm actually doing this job for a friend and they've already done the footings for me. So what I'm gonna do is if you're unsure about what size to dig your footings, how wide to make them, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to a website which will give you all the necessary information of how deep or how wide you need to build your footings, um, depending on the size of the wall you're doing. In this particular case, we're doing a nine inch wall. So a lot of the processes I explained to you in this video, you can use on different size walls. And if you're unsure about how to build these different size walls, then there is a link in the description to a playlist and there'll be also a link at the end called Brick Lane for Beginners, where I go through absolutely everything there is to know about how to lay bricks. So you can check that out if you're unsure about any particular aspect of the size of the wall, type of the wall, bond of the wall, etc. You can go down there and check that out. Okay, so once you have your footings all set in, then we need to set out where the bricks go. I'm gonna be using one of these tapes to set out because these are absolutely fantastic bits of kit. I have done a video about this and I'll leave that linked in the description. It is basically a tape, um, an, a metric tape, but it's also got everything you need to know about bricks on there as well. Like I said, I've done a purpose review video of this tape. So if you'd like to see that, check it out down in the description. What we need to do is we need to build one of these piers there and also at the end there and into the middle bit with the brickwork like this. Now we're gonna have what's known, what's called an expansion joint in the middle. I'll explain more about that when we get there. And as you can see, the, the people who've done the things before have, have actually marked out exactly where they want the pier to go. It is in the center. What we need to do is to make sure that this actually works out brickwork. We use our brick tape and we measure from this point down to this point here. I've actually already done this, but I'm gonna show you what I did uh, to make sure it fits. And then we're gonna check from this side to this side, make sure it fits. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and lay one course all the way through the bottom to make sure everything fits. And then we go along and build the piers. So you take your tape and you put it down exactly where you want your wall to go. And I'll bring you in closer in a second and show you how I know how many bricks it's gonna be and where to put them. You obviously need to make sure that your tape is touching on both ends. And right, I'll bring you in and show you what we're looking at. So this section here is telling me that it's 16 bricks long. From this point here to this point here, that is one brick. So I know that it's 16 bricks long. However, with this tape, there is one small thing you have to pay attention to. At the other end of the tape, it doesn't take into account for the first joint. So as you can see here, I've made three marks. The first one was the original 16, then I moved it 10 mil along. So we've got a joint at that end. And then I've moved it, we've got this one here as well for the joint on this side for where the pier is going to be. So this side here is where the brick for the pier is going to be. And this part here is the joint and this. So basically we need to ignore that first side. And this is going to be where the 16th brick goes. So that is marked out for that part. And now we need to, well, I've actually done exactly the same over here already with the three marks. So we know exactly where those piers have got to go. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to knock up some knock up some cement. If you don't know how to mix cement for brick lane, then again, brick lane for beginners, I go into detail about how to mix mix mortar. And yeah, you can go check that out so you know exactly how to mix mortar before you start laying any bricks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tile up this bit. I'm going to go uh, knock some muck up and I'll lay the first course of bricks all the way through this side here and then come back to you and we'll explain exactly what the next process is. Okay, and then we have the first course all set out. Now the reason that you do this, you set out one course first, is so that you know that all those bricks are in the right place. You're not gonna build a corner at one end, build a corner at the pier and one at the other end, run them in and realize in the middle you have what's called broken bond, where you have to put a half that and then two, three quarters either side. This way, you at least to ensure that everything is in the right place. And also, you put the level on it, and you can make sure that the whole thing is actually in there. So I've the leveled the whole way through. So that I know that I've got something that A, the footings are level, and that B, I've got enough 
other level to run off and have everything looking nice and perfect. So there we go. The first course is set out on this side. I need to go over and do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to film that because I've already done it once, but hopefully you can see how that's done. And also, for those of you who have noticed, when I was laying the first course, I was using a technique of what is called pick and dip. Now I do this because <coughs> it's a lot faster and I'm doing this on a price so I want to get it done as quickly as I can. I find the traditional method more enjoyable to, to lay, but pick and dip for, to make money. If you're interested in learning how to do pick and dip, I have done a video on that. Again, it is in the Bricklane for Beginners playlist, but I'll also link it down below. And in the Bricklane for Beginners playlist, the first few episodes it explains how to lay bricks the traditional way, so that there's that option there for you as well. If you're interested in learning how to know both, then again, description put down there and you'll find the playlists and the videos. Okay, right, I'm gonna lay this other side, get it set out, then I'll come back to you once we're done and show you the next step. Right, okay, I've got the other side sorted and we've come back to the first side. Now, as you can see here, I've, I've loaded it out ready to go. We've got boards and bricks all set out. One thing is I've got to switch this pier around the other way. I put it in around the wrong way. So all I'm gonna do is there's two ways you can go about doing this. You can either build corners at either end and build the piers up, or you can do what I'm gonna do, which is do one course at a time all the way through. So you don't have to build the piers up, you just lay the bricks as you go. I find it a lot quicker because like I said, you're not building the corners. You're just putting two bricks on either end, running the line, and then just building it as you go. So that's the plan that we're gonna be doing, and I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side. Like I said, I'm doing this for speed, try and get this done as quickly as possible. So hopefully it's gonna look good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you guys up, just do a little time lapse of me licking a lane. But like I said, if you want anything to do with any of the specifics of how to lay bricks, then again, Brooklyn for Beginners down in the description and a tag at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, a quick change of plan. So these footings were a little bit low and it turns out that it's making my beds a bit bigger. And also this is not to gauge. I was following the original pier that's there but some of these beds are massive so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ignore this and just go by what i can because otherwise some of these beds they're like 20 mil i don't know if i can follow that this will look horrible so i'm going to ignore this and just do what do what i can here to gauge so for the for those of you who don't know gauge is essentially your 75 times table a brick is 65 mil and uh, a bed is 10 mil so that's 75 mil so every brick going up every course is 75 mils, so it's 75, 1500, 225, etc, etc. And that pier does not follow that, so I'm gonna completely ignore that and go with what I know. So a little bit of a change of plan, I set all this out, and I'm probably gonna end up having to build corners just to make it right. Anyway, I'll see how it goes, but I'm gonna try and get this corner done. Right, it's another morning. I didn't film the last end of yesterday because I just wanted to get set up and it was being a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I've decided to go against laying one course at a time and actually build corners at either end. It works out that's easier for me. So in this episode, uh, this part of the, this episode, this part of the video, I'm just going to set up a few time lapses and I'm going to build this pier here and I'm going to build a rack back on that pier up to the height and then we're going to run the middle in afterwards. So various different ways of laying bricks can be required at various different jobs in this particular job the case of doing one one course at a time turned out to be not as fast as what i'm going to expect to be doing building the corners a lot of aspects of bricklaying is you have to see the situation and sometimes you have to adapt to certain aspects of the situation in this case turns out to be laying one course at a time wasn't ideal so we're going to be building the piers and then we're going on from there so i'll set you guys up do some time lapse and then we'll uh, get some running in done
All right, so that corner's ready. We're too shy on the top of there to match up with the other end, but that's fine. I can put those last two on once you've run all this in. And yep, we're gonna run this in now. I'm gonna load out a few more bricks, get another couple of gauges in the mixer. But before we do that, two things. One, expansion joint. This is what expansion joint looks like. It's basically foam, as you can see here. Oh, you can't really see, but basically it's 12 mil, and this goes in between, in between the brickwork. I've put it on the opposite side of this pier so that you can't see it and you also put in what are called slip ties now slip ties this part goes in and as you can see it comes in and out of that sheathing quite easily that allows for lateral movement but not what's this way shear movement shear movement anyway it can move this way like bend but it can't move that way if that makes any sense. So what I do is I like to put these in every two, two courses of expansion joint, and I'll just do every two courses, put some ties in, and that should be it. In regards to expansion, when should you put it in? Now, I generally put it in, once this car's gone past, I generally put it in, in single skin brickwork, every between five to six meters, and in nine inch brickwork, every eight to ten meters but as far as i'm aware i think for single skin it's about six meters and for nine inch i think it's actually eight or twelve twelve meters i think it is but i'm not 100 percent sure so this run is 8.2 so i just thought i'll put it in the middle just to be on the safe side and then that way we're covered for any movement if there is any but because it's a nine inch wall i very much doubt there'll be any movement whatsoever and the other thing i'd just like to say is a big thank you to rollins group for sending me out a couple of tools to play with one is this 10 inch london pattern leather handled marshalltown trowel which i must admit is fast becoming a favorite of mine so yeah i'm enjoying that and also you may have noticed this level Capro level, 100 mil, but as you can see, it's got something a bit extra to it. It's got a ruler on it. Now, I'm gonna be doing a full review of this soon, so if that is something you are interested in seeing, the review of that, then subscribe down below and make sure you don't miss out on it. Right, I'm gonna load out a bit more, get a bit more muck on a go, and then we'll get set up and lay a few bricks. As you can see, I have the main bulk of the walls built. I have also done the one on the other side, as you saw me do, but obviously the customer's car is in the way. So we'll come over here and I'm gonna show you exactly how we finish these walls off. Now there are multiple ways you can finish a wall off. Brick on edge, soldier course. You can also have stone cappings. You can also have lead that are quite rare, but you can have them done. In this particular case, it is gonna be tile creasing with a brick on edge to match in with the existing wall at the front of the house. I'll show you just now. This here is called brick on edge because it's a brick essentially laid on its edge and underneath is what is known as a tile creasing. Tile creasings look like this to start with. And then as you can see here, I have already made a little start on showing you how to set these out. So you put the tile creasings in like so, brick on edge on top. And as you can see here, there is what is called a bit of flaunching or benching, depending on what you want to call it, just to uh, let the rain fall down the side of the brick and then drip off the front. That is essentially what that is for. To keep the rain off the front of the brickwork. Did this yesterday, just set up a few tile creasings, put a few brick on edge in first so you can put your string lines up and don't have to worry about these bricks getting pulled along. So I'm gonna set a few bricks up here. I'm gonna build it along here, show you how it's done along here. All right, so first thing we need to do here is obviously just put a little bit of muck down. You don't want as much as if you were laying a brick. You want enough just to lay two creasing tiles. You take your tile and with a bit of muck on your trowel, remember to flick it, as I've shown you in all the videos in the Brick Lane for Beginners, and then just run a bit of muck down the front of that. And then from there, bed that in as if you were bedding a, t uh, a brick. Don't worry about getting muck on the top because you are gonna be answering your phone and then continuing the video. So once you've, had, once you've set your creasing tile in place, what you want to do is get a small boat level, just make sure that it is level, and then from there, take a tape measure, 
measure each side to make sure the overhang is the same on both sides of the wall. So in my case, it's 28 mil on either side, a fraction under. And then from there, you just take another creasing tile and do exactly the same. It can be quite difficult getting the muck on the tile like so, like this, but practice makes perfect. And then again, just tip that in there like as if you were laying a brick. Scrape off the top and don't worry too much about getting muck on the top because you're going to be covering this with a brick and also flaunting so any muck on the top is going to get covered up so don't worry too much about that so once you have done that you take the boat level make sure it's level in this case it's probably better to use a longer level make sure that's level and then from there set your bricks on the top Set a bit of mortar up as if you were laying the brick. And then from there, you take your brick that you're about to lay. You want to fill the frog up if it has a frog just by slapping some muck in, dragging it off. And then from there, you apply mortar to each side. You want to make sure that when you press this in, all this mortar is going to come in so you want enough mortar on there to press in and fill that perp up so as you can see i'm dragging that in at a bit of an angle and then you pop that in like so make sure it's level i can't really check to see if it's upright because these bricks are proper wobbly a little tap make sure that is all in there and again you just want to double check your measurements are the same as the overhang of the creasing tile so that you can make sure that that is exactly in line with the brickwork below, which that is. Yeah, perfect. So then from there, you do the same step with two more bricks and then you're ready to set your line up and run it in. When you're doing brick on edge, it's always good to <clears throat> to gauge from the brickwork below, because three brick on edge equals one brick in stretcher bond. So if you try and keep the end of that perp in line with the end of that brick, you will be perfectly suited. Just follow that all the way along, keep those in line and you're uh, looking good. If you are actually, if you don't have a full stretcher like I do here and you have the top course, imagine that this course here is like this brick hook here, half bonded. Just, just ignore the, the half bond and just look for the brick below. So if these bricks were up here and this course didn't exist, I would ignore the course below and look for the one below that. Hopefully that makes sense. And yeah, just all you have to do is just follow those perps all the way along and you'll have a perfectly, perfectly aligned, perfectly fitting in brick on edge. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is once you set this up, I'll just show you how to set up the lines and then we'll lay a few bricks in brick on edge. And I'll show you a little trick of how to wrap up your lines without having to put pinholes in your muck. So if it's gone off and you haven't got any, any pinholes to get in there, then I'll show you a little trick on how to, how to wrap your lines up. Make sure that's all in line. Perfect. Okay. Right, to set your lines up without having to put any pinholes in, all you need to do is take a brick, put it on the edge. I've already set this line up on the other end. Simply, all you do is you just wrap your line around the brick like so and pull it back a fraction. Do exactly the same on the other side. Set a brick down. Take your lines, pull them a little bit tight, wrap them around a couple of times. And then what I like to do just put one more brick in front and then pull that tight so you've got nice tight lines. And then from there, we're ready to lay some bricks. When laying to a line brick on edge, everything is exactly the same as if you were laying these three bricks here. Fill up the frog, butter up the sides, put it in exactly the same way. But when it comes to the lines, you want to pay attention to one of the two sides more than the other. So if I put that in like so, what I'm going to do because this side of the brickwork is going to be seen by the customer and obviously trees on this side. 
I'm going to set this brick to that line, the back side set to that line. Now, because I've got oddly shaped bricks, sometimes the bricks are bigger or smaller and it might push that backside line out. So always pay attention to one side more than the other because if you have variation in your bricks, that is um, what you're going to have to pay attention to. And then keep a boat level just to hand, just to pop that on the top to make sure that's level. What I like to do is I like to have it a fraction leaning one way or the other, just so that any rain will drip straight off the top and it won't sit around and make a pool on the top of your uh, top of your wall. Okay, and that is pretty much brick on edge. All you do is you run along, just keep doing that, plop a brick in, make sure you keep an eye down here on your on the gauge of the brick rope below so that you know you're not going to end up with a cut in the middle. Again, just follow three bricks to one stretcher, three um, brick on edge to one stretcher, and you will be you'll be good. When you go to put the last brick in, butter up the brick both sides, pop it in, and if there is any mortar that needs to go in after that, you can pop that in with a tuck pointer when you go and do the pointing at the end. And there we have it, one finished garden wall on both sides. Now the customers are away, I'll show you the other side as well. I finished it off with the brick on edge as I was explaining to you, but I also have finished it off with the brick on edge on the piers. And I've done a little bit of flaunching on the edge like I said I was going to. This video was a condensed version of every aspect of how to build a garden wall from start to finish but if you would like to learn more and in more detail about each different aspect of the build then click this playlist here it's the Brick Lane for Beginners playlist there's a load of videos in there and you'll learn a hell of a lot more than just in this video. Also if you're interested in watching me build a three bedroom house completely by myself click this playlist here with that being said please do subscribe down below if you've enjoyed these videos and I will see you all in the next one. So take care and I'll see you then. Ta-ra!